what is going on everybody welcome back to project zomboy now this video is going to be a little different as you must have already seen by clicking on this video uh so today i'm going to be talking about 10 tips or 10 rough general tips kind of some some bigger categories i'd say but it's kind of like 10 tips so that's what we're sticking with so i hope you guys do enjoy um you guys have been loving my playthrough series um so i thought i'd make a tip video for you guys uh i'm just gonna go ahead and jump right into it because that's why you clicked on this video hopefully um so starting with the first tip now i'm just gonna kind of go over our interaction menu keybinds things that might help you make make things a little easier first things first we're gonna go down on the left hand side up in the top left corner now you got these two circle kind of uh icons up here that'll be your primary and your secondary slot if you can see it says primary and secondary the next is going to be your inventory it's going to pop up your lootable area that's on the floor and then your actual inventory now you can also open both of these boxes by hitting the i key unless you changed your key binds but as default it is the i key for inventory now these box when you first play this game because i know a lot of you are going to be new to this game um hopefully if that's why you're clicking on this video or you just want some more tips we'll see um but uh these boxes will spawn up at the top kind of here and as you can see i'm just kind of clicking at the top gray dark box and just clicking and holding and then dragging anywhere i want to on the screen now you can also go to the bottom right corner of these boxes and click and hold and then you can drag and resize to whatever shape size fits your needs and then you can just place them anywhere you want to on the screen now i believe these only works for these two boxes that you can resize things like that and then you can just hit i again to close them all out and you can just quick simple ease of access the next one is going to be your health which is h uh, simple keybind H for health and then this is just kind of info all the info you need about your health skill things like that so you can just close out of that and you can also click it up here at the top left where it says health right there so um and then the next one's your crafting pretty self-explanatory and then then you got your map so as you can see, this is your map. You can also keybind M for map, uh, open and close this uh, with uh, simple ease of access. And uh, while we're here, I'm gonna go over a quick tip for the map. So you may be wondering, well, how do I use the map? You know, these symbols. So you can change the views down here in the bottom right by clicking this grid. Uh, it'll kind of go from flat just like this or kind of kind of a almost a 3d looking map but i like it personally like this just a top down view now you need a pen pencil red uh pen or a blue pen you can find these lootable around the area you actually need a writing utensil in order to write on your map and you also need an eraser to allow you to move the marking edit the marking uh things like that and then you can just simply click on which icon you want in the top right map symbol and then you can kind of just place anywhere you want to on the map. Say, you know, you uh, already looted a certain area. You can cross off houses, things like that. And you can hit add note and you can type whatever you want. And it'll appear like that. And then if you wanted to get rid of it, as long as you have the eraser, you can just get rid of it just like that. So, uh, you do need those set items. I will show you those items if you're not quite sure what they actually look like. So you got the pen, pencil, red pen right there. Those are three items. And then you got the eraser and blue pen. Now, moving on to tip number two, we're going to be talking about kind of uh, your first thing is you're going to obviously be coming into zombies. So um, zombies, um, I would recommend walking. Now, I know it's crazy. You're going to be like, what do you mean just walk away from the zombies? Now, these zombies, uh, if you are choosing the normal survival starting setting with not with custom sandboxes or custom settings, 
you can actually outwalk most of the zombies as long as you're careful and you kind of know what you're doing as you can see here you can kind of just outwalk them without them ever touching you as long as you're smart and you don't run into a corner or anything like that but you can just easily outwalk the zombies as you can see right here so it's a uh, pretty simple self-explanatory uh because uh, if you do decide to hold shift and run uh you are going to get fatigued uh and exhausted way faster than you need to be and which that will do that's going to reduce your now moving on to tip number three as we're trying to fight these zombies up in the top right corner you're going to get panicked earlier on and now there's like extreme panic which is like really high that like you're like severely panicked and then there's just a regular panic and then there's a slight panic now each of these is kind of a different level um they kind of what they pretty much do and what you don't want it doing and i would recommend not fighting a big group of zombies is because it reduces your critical hit chance and it also reduces your accuracy and damage so um i don't exactly know the percentage i don't know how much it exactly is but it will matter if you're coming down to a big fight um just facing some zombies so i would do as best as possible to avoid large groups early on now when you're playing eventually um uh as you progress through the save you won't get panicked so much or you won't get as panicked just to do you kind of get used to it it's kind of how the aspect of the survival game is but still in bigger giant hordes you will get panicked um so keep a lookout for that just keep in mind be aware of your surroundings and uh, just know that if you do come try to fight a big horde uh you're just gonna have to be extremely focused and trying not to exactly die because you don't hit as strong now if you're also running around like we mentioned before it's going to also affect your hitting so you don't want to be panicked and fatigued so just some helpful tips when fighting zombies um that you want to be aware of tip number four um is zombies now you're gonna have all these zombies littered all over your base things like that that you don't really want happening like nobody wants all these zombies i mean some of you might you just want to leave this big mess but there, there comes there comes a risk with it and that is getting sick yes you can get sick from the amount of blood and the amount of zombies you have around now if you just leave all these zombies eventually over time and you stay here and more bodies and more blood piles up you will get sick which will cause you to die and you don't want that especially when you put uh much time into this one character because once this character dies it's over you can either create a new character or start a new save so and also for tip number four with all these zombies causing you to be sick and everything now you're gonna have all this blood and so like i said you're not gonna want to have any sort of this around so what you can do is you can right click and hit grab course corpse and i didn't grab the corpse but you can grab the corpse and it'll put it in your as we talked about your primary and secondary slot kind of you are holding it and then you can hit drop course to any location now what you can also do is grab and clean up the blood as long as you have some sort of towel like a bath towel a dish towel that you find around and along with bleach so you just kind of as if you have those in your inventory you'll right click hit clean blood and it'll clean the blood in a certain radius and as you can see i do have uh if i can find it the <laughs> bath towel right here and the bleach towel so uh hope that does help and hopefully you don't get sick when you decide to uh just leave all the bodies around and actually clean it up so i hope you guys do decide to do that um uh, but just to let you know that will happen if you don't clean up the disastrous mess of the zombies now uh, tip number five when you're kind of um sitting at home inside your base now what most of you probably want to know is kind of the books what do the books do you know i heard the books will help you level up your skill um yes they do so a lot of these books you're going to find inside of houses um now there's intermediate there's beginner um there's some comic books things like that now the comics book it tells you it does some re stress reduction unhappiness 
uh, boredom reduction, things like that. And then there's also other books like Advanced. Uh, and there's there's all these different books. Now, those different books are for set skills. As you can see, Fishing is for Fishing. Mechanics is for Mechanics. Now, they don't exactly give you the skill level. So it says in that big box, you know, this book gives you an XP multiplier for the level one to two skill. If you don't quite know what that means, what that means is it's going to give you double the XP for reading that book towards getting those skill levels. So if you read this book and you think, oh, you know, I got two free skill points. No, you got you still got to do those certain tasks for like mechanics you know you still you got to work on cars but as you're working on cars and you read that book it's going to allow you to further progress faster to the next skill level than you would without reading the book it's just a, an xp multiplier like two times things like that so uh if you want to level up like said carpentry or mechanics um i would recommend trying to find those books as and hoarding them and then waiting till you read the book now another key quick bonus tip uh if you do have a book on you and you want to read it super fast you can hit read and now this only works if you're playing solo if you're playing multiplayer this won't work but in the top right corner there is your time keys you can fast forward and it'll actually read you the book faster uh if you want to make the book not so long um because it does take a little bit of time to actually read the book. Now, moving on to tip number six. Now, if you're kind of uh, found the base you want to secure and the base that you kind of think is what you need to do, what you can do is barricade up your house and do some construction. Now, you will need the carpentry skill. So once again, like I said, I recommend reading the carpentry books, things like that, that you find in order to increase your carpentry skill. Now, doing this will also increase your carpentry skill. So what you can do is you can right click and you can add, put a barricade on, but you're going to have some planks and some nails that you got to find. But if you can go up to any window or even this door right here, I can show you, you can shut the door, right click, barricade the door and then it'll barricade the door. And that'll kind of prevent any zombies from getting in there like super fast. And as you can see, door is barricaded. So I hope that helps when you're kind of building your base. And then for construction, you can also build walls. So you got walls, you got door frames, you got stairs. You can build oh, you could build a whole custom base if you wanted to. Um, but in order to level up that said carpentry skill. Now that I locked the door, I can't get in. So actually, we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll head to this house. So uh, the easiest way that I found is dismantling things, but you gotta have the correct uh, type or tool. So if we come over here real quick, and like I said, do you want to get rid of this table? You can hit disassemble large round table, and it'll slowly disassemble this table, and that'll also boost. To your skill level in carpentry alrighty moving on to tip number seven it's going to be vehicles so now vehicles um you'll find them all scattered about the map now that some of them are going to be damaged some of them are not uh and if you want to know how they're damaged or whether or not i mean physical appearance is pretty good and all but uh if you go up to the hood of the cart and you hit the e key kind of like you're interacting with it opening it um it'll pop up the vehicle mechanics window as you can see right here now it's going to tell you the condition the weight all that good stuff uh, it's going to even tell you how much gas is actually in the car if you look at the gas tank um it's pretty handy especially if you want to see what vehicle actually has gas in it or if you can salvage parts from the vehicle and you so um and then if you also hit v key hold the v key uh, you can have this little circular window. It's your vehicle kind of window. You can also do it that way as well. Now, this little circular menu is very handy. Um, you can even do it from inside the vehicle. So if we get inside the car right here, hit E, and then we have we can actually sleep in it, all that good stuff. And if you also hit Z, you can also switch seats. 
uh, it's just a quick keybind, and you can also exit vehicle from whichever door you want to and leave. And then if you hold the V key while you're in the driver's seat, you could even do more like start the engine. And then you can shut it off, turn on your headlights. So it's a pretty quick, easy thing. And it'll also allow you to attach trailers or tow vehicles. If you have a vehicle next to the rear of another vehicle, you just hold the V key and you can tow uh, what you need to tell um, Moving on to tip number eight now once you say you got a vehicle you got your base going um, It's gonna be all established The water and electricity is going to eventually shut off. It's random depending on um, Anything really it's just random so but there is a set time it's from day zero all the way up to day 30 so you can spawn in and have no unlimited water right away like all the water is shut off you only have limited water supply or you can get all the way up to day 30 without the water shutting off or electricity um so keep that in mind eventually the water and electricity will shut off and you're going to have to prepare for that for the water you're gonna have to build rain collectors or you could even build um not necessarily build but find uh pots and pans and place them outside and when it rains in the game, it'll you'll collect rainwater that you can boil and all that good stuff and have drink safeable water that you can store up. So keep that in mind when you're building a base that eventually the water and everything will shut off. Now, moving on to tip number nine, in order to help the electricity part, uh, we're going to be talking about generators. So now generators you'll find all around the map, as you can see, one's right here in this shed. Um, generators, if you right click them, you can see all this wonderful info. You can even see the generator info. Um, I'm going to go ahead and disconnect it just for, uh, for your guys' sake so I can explain more. But when you go to connect generator, this is going to be highlighted red and says you do not have the knowledge. Now you're going to be like, well, how do you get the knowledge on learning the generator? So pretty much you need to find a certain magazine in the world. It's called how to use generators. You know, it's it's pretty self-explanatory, but this is a recipe that will allow you to actually connect the generator and actually use a generator to uh, power your house or your base or gas stations, uh, things of that sort. So um, keep in mind, you do need to find this magazine down here. It's called How to Use Generators. Now, it's a, a recipe, so it's a read only once, uh, but you do need to read it for each character that you have or end up having. Um, and then moving on to tip number 10. So once you have uh, hopefully a base and everything, uh, there is an event in the game called the helicopter event. Now this is very dangerous. Um, you do not want to be caught in this if at all possible. So the helicopter event, it spawns a helicopter. You'll be able to hear it. it it's, it's pretty loud in the game. Um, but it spawns a helicopter and the helicopter will find you. And if it finds you, it'll follow you for a certain amount of time, um, which that attracts hordes of zombies within a huge radius. So my best bet, if you, my best tip, I should say, if you have a base, they will come to that base because the helicopter has spotted you, even if you're indoors. Um, it's just a one-time thing that happens, um, inside Project Zomboid kind of, any save you do unless you turn it off through custom settings um, for a custom sandbox setting uh, playthrough. So you'll want to drive away, lure all the zombies away until the helicopter event goes away. That way you don't ruin your base or any part you're trying to save without getting completely overrun because it will attract a lot of zombies. So with uh, that further ado, I hope you guys did enjoy. I kind of try to cover as many tips as I possibly could. Uh, within a good amount of time frame. Hopefully it wasn't too much for you. Um, if you guys do have any questions, please comment down below. And once again, if you did enjoy this, um, please be sure to like and subscribe. And hopefully for more content, I am doing a playthrough right now on Project Zomboid. If you want to check that out, go to my channel or check the link in the description. So once again, hope you all enjoy, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.